Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a ranking of all of my ColourPop eyeshadow palettes. So it's been a minute since I have ranked all of my ColourPop palettes and I realized I've actually tried quite a few this year. So let's just hop right into it. We have 23 palettes to rank and coming in at number 23 is I think the first one I ever purchased and this is the Blush Crush palette. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know that pink is my go-to color after neutral brown, but this one I just really didn't think was the best quality. I don't necessarily love the exact tones of the pinks in here. I think this shade up here might have been a super shock, but honestly when I first got the palette it was kind of dried out. So that kind of left me with a negative impression the very first time I tried this palette. And then since then I've tried to create many different looks and I just never truly loved them. So for that reason, this is my least favorite ColourPop palette that I have. The color story itself is fine, but I just have a lot of other issues with it. So for that reason, this one is at number 23. At number 22, we have the Lil Ray of Sunshine palette. I still don't know why I bought this. This is an all matte mustard yellow eyeshadow palette. If someone could tell me what I was thinking when I purchased this, I would be grateful because I have no idea. I don't know if I was thinking I was going to start getting more into color. I don't know if I thought I could create a lot more gold eyeshadow looks with this. I have no idea. When have I ever worn yellow eyeshadow? The formulas in here are pretty. I have used the deeper shades, but I just don't understand why I even own this color story. And I specifically do not like yellow gold on my eyes. I don't know why I thought matte yellow shadows was a good idea, but unfortunately I just... This one is at number 22 because I cannot understand why I made this purchase. This is just not a color story that appeals to me at all. The quality is fine. I just don't understand why I purchased that palette. Coming in at number 21 is a palette that I did purchase purely off nostalgia. This is the Back to Hogwarts palette. So as a kid, I was a huge fan of the Harry Potter books. As an adult, I'm still a huge fan of the books. I still reread them from time to time. I love the books. I love the movies. The books especially. I just feel like the books got me through a lot of difficult times growing up and for that reason I am very very attached to this series. So of course I had to pick up this palette. The color story though, I don't have to tell you this is not one of my most used palettes. I may have used this once or twice so far and that's why this is ranking so low. And I completely understand the color story. These are perfectly appropriate colors and everything like that, but I'm not going to use these types of shades. I am not an overly colorful girl. I will get some use out of these greens, even maybe some of these warmer shades up here. The blue row, probably not. These really, really orangey shades and the yellows down here, probably not. So this color story definitely wasn't a smart purchase for me, but this is one that I definitely purchased off of nostalgia. So there is also a pressed glitter in here, which makes me not reach for this one. There's also quite a few of those more sequin shades that are like mattes with glitter particles in them. There's quite a few of those as well, which I don't love. So for that reason, I just really don't reach for this much, but this was a purely, purely nostalgic purpose. This is one I'll probably keep forever out of nostalgia, but it was kind of unnecessary. At number 20, we have one of their mega palettes, and this is one that I think is so beautiful for the fall. I also think the Harry Potter palette is beautiful for fall as well, but this palette especially is fantastic for fall if you love to get into those jewel tones. This is the It's a Mood palette. So this, like I said, is one of their mega palettes. I do have a few of these. And I do like this one quite a bit because you do get some of these more neutral wearable shades near the top. I like the way that they've laid it out and that you get more of these greens, blues, purples, oranges. I love the way that they laid it out. It does make it easier to figure out what kind of look you want to create. There are some pressed glitters in here, which is part of why it is ranking near the bottom. I just, I really don't go for those that often. I think the color story is quite pretty, especially, like I said, if you're somebody who goes for those jewel tones, but in all honesty, I am just not reaching for this color story all the time. I do not think this is a bad palette. I think it's really pretty. I think it's really well done. It's just not one I reach for quite often, and that's why I put it at number 20. Coming in at number 19 is the Troublemaker palette. So this one, I think I purchased a couple years ago in the fall, and this one is 
kind of interesting. This one is definitely deeper, it's grungier, it's got elements of purple, some pink, and some slate gray shades in here. This is just a really interesting color story, and I'm not the most grungy eyeshadow wearer at all, but something about this one lured me in. I think the silver might have had something to do with it. And then this shade over here is a super shock, which also always lures me in every time. I do think this is a really fun palette for the fall, but because it is on that grungier side, I don't reach for it as often. The formula is great, but again, it's just one of my lesser used color stories, but I do think it is a fun color story, and I do enjoy playing with it when I dig it out. Coming in at number 18 is actually the palette I purchased with the Lil Ray of Sunshine palette. This is the Big Poppy palette, so this is another all matte palette, but this one is definitely one I'm more likely to reach for. So I don't always go for these orange tones, these super warm oranges, but sometimes, especially in the fall, and I do love these tones with my blue eyes. So while I don't reach for this a ton, it is one that I'm actually like to get use out of so that makes me happy as well I do think this is quite easy to work with it's quite pretty I like the way it's laid out again the formula is great it's a nice little staple orange palette if you love leaning into those really orange tones I do think it's nice for that coming in at number 17 I think this was a holiday launch from a few years ago but this is the boudoir noir palette and this one's nice because it does give you a really nice big mirror it does have this really reflective backing here as well which I don't love because it kind of throws off the colors in the palette for me. And this is another one that kind of reminds me a lot of the Natasha Denona Mini Gold. It's got these greens, it's got these yellow golds in here. It does have this pressed glitter, which I wish it didn't because it's just... Again, I'm not going to use it. Overall, the tones in here I think are beautiful. I just don't reach for these super gold and green color stories. I really don't reach for my Natasha Denona mini gold for that reason. I do think this is a really pretty fall color story as well. I've clearly got a pattern here. I love these fall themed color stories. That makes sense. It's my favorite season, but I definitely love palettes based around fall. I think this is pretty. Again, it's just not one of my most reached for. I've definitely used it quite a few times, but I haven't used it as often as maybe I would like. Coming in at number 16 is the All Amethyst Palette. So this is one I just tried out this year, and this is a really, really pretty purple color story. I do love a good purple. I really do. I think they're so pretty. I love that you do get this more icy shade down here. I love that there is a pink thrown in here. You get this very, very bright amulet shade up here. That is something else, but I do think this palette is beautiful. I do love purples. I don't reach for this as much though, but I do think it's a really beautiful palette. And again, the formulas aren't disappointing here. These are really, really nice formulas. Coming in at number 15, I have the Plush Like Me palette. So I love the packaging on this one. It does have little velvet detailing. It's got gold around the outside. They definitely did well with this packaging and you also do get a mirror in here. You do get that reflective background again that drives me crazy. So this is one of their 12 pans that tends to have bigger shades. Some of their 12 pans are smaller than this. Some of them are giant for some reason. I think this color story is very, very pretty. This one is supposed to be very 90s-esque and I think they did a great job with that. I do think it's really pretty, but I do also think that this is one of those color stories that really just isn't the most cohesive. You do get this random green here. You do get a green here, but otherwise there's not really much to put with it. And then you get this kind of almost mustardy tone up here. I just find that for some reason, even though this is kind of a neutral palette, it leans grungy, definitely very 90s, but somehow the color story isn't the most cohesive. I I have enjoyed playing with it and I definitely have created looks that I really like with this palette, but I think the color story itself throws me off a little bit. Coming in at number 14 is one that I actually think is a bit of a staple. This is one of their mega palettes. This is the Gone Matte palette. Anytime I review an all matte eyeshadow palette, this one comes out for comparisons because this really has everything you could ever need. You do get a lot of these neutral brown mattes, but then you get a row of more pinky tone mattes. You get some purple you get some blue grays up here. I mean, this really has everything you could need. And when it comes to the browns, you get these warmer tones, you get these more true neutrals, then you get these cool tone browns. I just think that this palette is so well done. This is an excellent, excellent all matte palette. I do think that because ColourPop is a little bit more affordable, they might not always have those undertones nailed down the ways 
that same makeup by Mario does, but I still think this really has everything you need. If you're looking for an all matte palette, if you're just starting out, or you just want something simple that kind of has every matte you could ever want, this is a great option. I think this is a fantastic all matte palette. I don't reach for it that much. I don't always reach for all matte palettes, but when I do, it's usually the Makeup by Mario or the Patrick Ta or recently the NARS Co Rong Quad. I think that's fantastic. But if I was needing some pinks or purples, this is a really good one. Coming in at number 13 is the Off Melrose palette. I like this one quite a bit. So it unfortunately does have a pressed glitter in here, but this is a really neutral, easy to work with palette. The one thing I don't love is this shade right here, this kind of greeny gold. I think it could have been replaced with something. And then this shade down here, this is Fairfax. And this is kind of one of those brown to purple to blue type shifty shades. And I just don't think that looks flattering on the eyes at all. Um, at least not on me, but I do think this is a pretty palette. You do get some neutral browns, which of course I love. You do get this more mauve tone right here, and then the shimmers along the top are actually really, really pretty and easy to work with. This is a really lovely neutral palette. There's just some shades in here that I don't necessarily love, but this really is a lovely, lovely neutral palette, and I really didn't hear a lot of people talk about this one. Coming in at number 12 is the Cloud 9 palette. So this one is very, very light, and I do think it's beautiful. I don't necessarily love blue eyeshadow, but if I wanted to go in a blue direction, this is the way I would go. This is more like a blue-gray type palette, and for that, I really like it. Again, not loving that pressed glitter. I wish they'd just stop doing those all together. And we have a sequin shade down here as well, which I don't love. But the rest of these shades really are beautiful. And like I said, these are kind of a palatable way to go about blues if you are more hesitant on working with blue shadow. You can keep it very simple with these three shades right here, even these whites up here. This white is a super shock and it's beautiful. But like I said, these are just such an easy way to get around using blues. So you're kind of still getting that blue, but it's more like a slight gray, more wearable, more easy to work with, more approachable way to use blue. So I do think this is really pretty. However, these shades are all very, very light. You do not get a ton of depth with this. This is, this one's the deepest shade you have, but this is really just a navy sequin shade. This one is otherwise your deepest option. So this one is not going to give you a ton of depth. So if that is something you like, if you love a lot of depth and dimension in your looks, definitely skip this one because it is very light, but it's overall quite pretty. Coming in at number 11 is another palette that got me on nostalgia, but this one is definitely one I'm more likely to gravitate towards. This is the Twilight palette. So again, nostalgia got me with this one. And this palette is another one that I think is perfect for fall. I also think that this does have some easy to work with browns in here. You get a lot of greens. I do love green shadow. You do have some of these icy shades. You do get some blues. And of course, we do have some classic pressed glitters once again. So this color story overall, I was very impressed with because I felt like it really did bring out the essence of the Twilight movie. I did hear a rumor at one point. I don't know if it's true. I hope it is. But I heard that they are planning to do collab palettes um, for all of the Twilight movies, which fingers crossed, that would be amazing. But this one really, really encapsulates the essence of the first movie in Forks. I think that's beautiful. So I think they did a really nice job in working with this color story. I, of course, don't reach for these shades all the time. This is just not my go-to type color story. I can see myself reaching for this a lot in the fall. Now, I think they came out with this palette in either January or February of this year, and I think the first thing I said was, I think this would have been more fun to come out in the fall because how perfect is this color story for fall? However, it doesn't really matter when they launched it because I think the initial launch of this palette sold out in six minutes. I was fortunate enough to get in there. Um, the restock sold out fairly quickly, so I mean, obviously they did really well, but I do think this is a more fall color story and I'm really looking forward to playing with it a lot in the fall months. I was kind of thinking of doing like a multiple looks with this one. I think that would be pretty. But again, this is still a little bit on the grungy side, but it's one that I feel excited to play with. So 
not a bad thing. I do love the Twilight palette. Coming in at number 10 is the Making Mauves palette. This is one I've had for quite a while also, but I love a good mauve color story. I'm kind of into the mauves today. I just love a good mauve color story. I just think they're so pretty. They're so easy to work with. My favorite mauve palette is probably the Natasha Denona Retro, but I really, really enjoy this one as well. This middle shade is one of those pink shades that I just really don't like on my eyes. There is something about that exact tone that seems to be in a lot of palettes that have pink and I just cannot get along with that shade. However, the rest of these shades in here are beautiful and easy to work with, fun to play with. You really don't get a lot of depth with this palette though, um, except for this shade, but even the shade really doesn't go that deep. So that's just something to keep in mind, but I do think this palette is beautiful. Coming in at number nine is the So Very Lovely palette. This one I think is gorgeous for spring. It just has these beautiful more pastel leaning shades but not so pastel that they're hard to work with. You get like this coral, you get this lavender which I always think is stunning. You do get this yellow gold that I don't love but these shimmers at the top are beautiful as well. I just think this is a really really beautiful palette. It's one of my favorites in the springtime. I just think it's very easy to work with. It just makes me think sunshine, flowers, all of the things. So it's out of season for me right now. I'm not reaching for it, but in the spring, this is one that always pops up when I do my spring palette suggestions, just because I think it's so pretty. Coming in at number eight, we have the Child palette. This is such a great green palette. If you love greens, this one is beautiful. So I know I went on and on about how I don't love green and gold color stories, but this is the exception. This is the exception, okay? So this one does have a mirror. This, does, this is mostly green with these two browns here. You do get a more white shade, and then you get this very shimmery gold. My gold is broken. I probably dropped it. Like this six, I love. I, of course, love the browns. I'll always love browns, but I get the most use out of these. I just think it's so pretty, and again, green is one of those colors that I'm definitely more comfortable with if I'm going for color. So I love that I have this little green palette, and I just think this is one of their very best that they've ever done um, in terms of collabs, but also in a green color story. I just think this is fantastic. I do love this palette. It's one of my... Definitely one of my favorite green tone palettes. Coming in at number seven is the Stone Cold Fox palette. So this is of course one of their mega palettes and I love a good cool tone color story. And this is probably one of the first ones that I picked up. I, like I said, love a good cool tone color story and this really has every cool tone shade you could ever want. You do get some pinks in here, you get a lot of grays in here, a lot of silvers, but overall just a bunch of really muted, brown tone neutrals. What more could you want? If you are a cool tone lover, this palette is so good. It's just so, so pretty. I actually think I might like this better than the Glam palette from Natasha Denona, which I know is such a staple, but this one just gives you so many more options, and I feel like you get a little bit more range from this one. I mean, you should. You have double the shades, but I just feel like this is just a really, really great cool tone palette. If you love cool tone shadows, you could grab this and this is all you'll ever need. Coming in at number six is one that I purchased very recently. Like I haven't even put this in a speed reviews yet, but I've been loving it so much. It's the one I'm wearing today. This is the Smoke and Roses palette. So this is one of their mega palettes that I've kind of been eyeing for a while. They do, I don't know why, their mega palettes just suck me in. I've currently been eyeing up the Bare Necessities, which I know has been around for ages. I've also been eyeing up the Precious Metals, but I don't think I would need both. If you do have Bare Necessities and Precious Metals, let me know down below which one you like better, please, so that I can order one. But I did pick up the Smoke and Roses at Ulta recently because this is another one I've been eyeing for quite some time. This is, like I said, a very pink color story. I used it today and I love how the look came out. I used it yesterday and I loved how the look came out. I do love some pinks. You do get some browns in here too to work with, some little bit more peachy tones too. I just think they're all so beautiful. I love that there's no pressed glitters in here, just a lot of really beautiful metallic shades that just give such a beautiful shine and sheen to the lids. They're just, again, so easy and beautiful to work with. And the mattes are incredible 
incredibly, incredibly blendable. I've really been enjoying this palette. This is definitely my favorite mega palette, and if I had this one a little bit longer, it would probably rank even higher in this video because I've really been loving this one. Coming in at number five is the 1111 palette. So this one I actually purchased because it reminded me of the I Need a Nude from Natasha Denona. You get a lot of these very neutral browns in here. That being said, once I compared them, they're really not that much alike. So you do get a lot of these neutral browns. You get some pops of pink. You do get some shimmers. You do get a pressed glitter. But overall, I think this is just a stunning palette. Like I said, it's not identical to the I Need a Nude by any means after comparing them, but it's still a color story that I get excited about because my neutral loving heart just loves to see something like this. Again, I think the formula in here is great. I think it's a beautiful palette. And this is one too that if I had Smoke and Roses longer and I'd been loving it longer and I'd had a chance to play with everything, I think it would be above the 1111. Coming in at number four is the Pretty Please palette. This is another spring staple. However, this is another one that's really not going to get you a lot of depth, but if you love these light, bright, ethereal looks for the springtime, this palette is such a staple. This is definitely very purpley, pink, pastel kind of color story. This whole row of three right here, these are all super shocks, and then you get some more sequin shades in this row. You get metallics here, and then you get mattes. So overall, it's just a very easy color story to work with. The sequin shades, like I've said before, really aren't my favorite. The best way to apply them so that you preserve the sequin is to apply with a finger and just kind of pat it on the lids. I just use them as a matte or as a transition shade. So I don't really care about that. You do end up losing a lot of the glitter, but I don't care because I'm using it as a transition. But this is such a beautiful, beautiful spring color story. And I love that we get three super shocks in this palette. I always love the light ethereal looks I get with this. I think it's beautiful. Coming in at number three is an all brown palette. This is the Not A Box Of Chocolates palette. This is another one that I really, really like. There is a pressed glitter in here, but otherwise, this rich brown color story just speaks to me so much. I've used this quite a lot. Brownie, earth tone eyeshadows are just always going to lure me in, but I do kind of like it a little bit more. I think because it came out um, in the fall, I do tend to reach for it a little bit more there just because it's got these more rich chocolatey tones, and I tend to love that richness in the colder months as opposed to, say, summer but I definitely think this is appropriate any time of year. I do love this palette. The metallics in here are so shiny and beautiful. The mattes, definitely very easy to work with. I just think this is a beautiful palette, and it's definitely, of course, it's one of my favorites. It's in my top three, but I do really, really love this one. Coming in at number two is the Clay It Cool palette. This one I love. I know this one is so incredibly warm toned. This was kind of, I think, their answer to the release of Patrick Ta's first palette. It was also these warm oranges, but also had two cream shades. So this one does have one cream shade, and mine is actually still good. I've had this palette for a couple years at this point, and the cream is still going strong. I kind of would have expected it to dry out, given that it's in this cardboard palette, but it hasn't. This shade here is a matte, and then you get mattes on the bottom and shimmers on top, much like Patrick Ta's palette. I just think this is so beautiful. So these tones are so easy to work with. This palette in general is just so incredibly easy to work with. And even though it's very, very orange and I don't always love these types of tones, something about this palette with my blue eyes, I love it so much. So this palette is definitely a favorite. We have no pressed glitters. Just some really solid mattes, some really solid metallics. The cream shade I don't really use, but you can use it as a base if you want to. It does work that way. I just think this is such an excellent palette, and I love it with my eyes. So this one was an easy number two. And coming in at number one is the That's Taupe palette. This is easily, in my opinion, one of the very, very best they have ever come out with. I love this so much. These are these cool tone taupey browns that I love so much. You do get a super shock over here and it is so shiny and stunning. I have reached for this so much because I love this type of color story. I just think it's so beautiful and this is just an everyday color story for me if I want it to be. So this is definitely my favorite of all of my ColourPop palettes. This one and Stone Cold Fox I think came out right around the same time which was kind of interesting. I think it was the same time 
that the glam palette from Natasha Denona came out because there was a bit of a cool tone craze there for a minute. Well, Stone Cold Fox I love because it gives us a lot of cool tones and it sprinkles in some pinks and some slate grays and blues, things like that. This I love because it's just a really curated cool tone brown color story and it's just very simple. So I love that taupe. But that is it. Those are my 23 ColourPop palettes. Some of these I could probably declutter and some of these I have for nostalgia and some of these I just love so so much. Let me know down below what is your favorite ColourPop palette or let me know your thoughts on ColourPop in general. I know they release way too much but I do still really enjoy their palettes. I don't tend to review them because it takes me a really long time for them to come here. Uh, I am based in Canada so if I order off their website it usually takes over a week to get here and by the time I get it they've already launched two more things. So I don't bother with trying to review their stuff but I do really enjoy picking up their palettes from time to time. But let me know down below all of your thoughts. I love hearing from you guys so so much. If you're new here I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!